Hello! Today I'm going to be making a camera tripod. Here's one that I made last year. The materials for this project are a 1x2. I need at least 80 inches of that. 1x3. need at least 23 inches. A 3 quarter inch dowel. This one's 4 foot long. You try to get the straightest one that you can find. I'm going to need a little piece of 2 by 4 it's 3 and a half inches long. Some half inch MDF or some half inch plywood. I prefer the MDF because it doesn't splinter. I'm going to need a piece that's at least 5 and 3 quarter by 11 and a half. Last thing I need is something like this mouse pad. I'm going to cut a little 2 inch square of this stuff. We also need some quarter inch fully threaded carriage bolts. We need one 6 inch, and we're going to cut that down to 5 inches long. One 3.5 inch, six 2.5 inch, two 2 inch, and one inch and a half. And this is the one that the camera is going to mount on. As far as I know, quarter inch 20 threads is the standard size thread on the bottom of all cameras. I forgot this one. We also need one 4 inch carriage bolt. We need six quarter inch hex nuts, five wing nuts, one nylon lock nut, we need two threaded inserts. These ones are the type that screw in. I prefer those over the T-nut style that you hammer in. You just make sure that they're not longer than a half inch long. We need 18 quarter inch flat washers, one quarter inch fender washer, and lastly some number eight wood screws. I'm going to use 19 one inch long and four half inch long. Here's a list of all the parts and their dimensions shown in inches. I'm going to start off by cutting the one by two. Now you can see here I actually went ahead and bought three one by twos. That way I can make sure that I get all the nice pieces and I can avoid all these defects and stuff. Because I'm making this tripod as a gift for somebody, I want it to look extra nice. So I'm going to need three legs that are 24 inches long. I'm also going to cut three dummy legs that are an inch and seven sixteenths long. And what these dummy legs are going to do is they're going to take the place of the real legs during assembly and it's going to make it a whole lot easier to put together. I've decided that I want to give everything a nice light sanding first. So what I did with the 1x2 was I cut three pieces that were 25 and 9 sixteenths long. That way, allowing for a 1 8 saw cut, after I have this sanded up, I'll be able to cut my 2 foot piece and the leftover piece is going to be inch and 7 sixteenths long. I'm also going to sand up this piece of 1x3. I just went ahead and I cut a piece that was about 3 foot long. It's going to be easier to sand this, well it's just one big long piece, than it is to sand it once I've cut it into all little smaller parts. I have some new safety equipment in addition to my safety glasses. I've started using some hearing protection as well. I've also got this dust mask that I try to wear when I'm doing things like sanding. I bought the type that has the exhaust valve because I wear glasses and they fog up really easy. So the exhaust valve helps a little bit, but I still get some fogging. I finished the sanding, so now I've started cutting the 1x3. I cut one piece three and a half inches long. I cut another piece two and one quarter inches long. Next I need seven pieces inch and a half long. Since I'm making seven of them, I'm going to use a stop lock. I've marked a line at inch and a half. So what I'll do is take this piece and line up the saw on that line and then I'll clamp this block of wood down to act as a stop.
I've got the block lined up in the right place and I've tightened up this clamp. Now it's very important here that I make sure that the saw isn't going to hit that clamp. That looks like it's fine. Another thing that's very, very important when you're cutting using a stop block is that once you make the cut, you take your finger off the trigger and make sure the blade stops before you raise the saw up. If you raise the saw up with the blade spinning, it's going to catch on that piece that you just cut. So I'm going to cut seven pieces, inch and a half long. So now I have all these parts cut. I've got my three legs, 24 inches long, cut from the 1 by 2 I got the three little dummy legs, inch and 7 sixteenths. I got my piece of 2 by 4 three and a half inches long. I got a piece of 1 by 3 three and a half inches long, another piece two and a quarter inches long. And I've got these seven pieces that are inch and a half long. Now it's interesting to note that a 1 by 2 is inch and a half wide. So you can see that I could have cut these pieces from 1 by 2 as well. These are going to have some screws put into them, and I use the 1 by 3 because I prefer the screws to go into the end grain, whereas they would go into the side if I used 1 by 2. It's just personal preference. I also cut this little piece of 1 by 3 that's 3 eighths of an inch wide. I'm going to use that for a measuring stick. Next I'm going to cut my piece of half inch MDF. Now how you cut it depends on the size of the piece you start with. What you need to end up with is you're going to need one piece that's 6 and 5 eighths by 5 and 3 quarters. You're going to need another piece that's 2 and a half by 4 and 1 quarter. You're going to need a third little piece that's 3 quarter by 2 and a half. And you're also going to need a piece that's around 2 and a quarter by 6 that we're going to cut some handles out of. So for this piece here, I'm going to start off by setting my fence here to five and three quarters, and I'm just going to cut a strip. Since it's MDF, I'm going to wear my dust mask. Once that's done, I can move over to the miter saw and cut a piece that's six and five eighths long. Then I'll cut a strip that's two and a half inches from which I'll cut my three quarter inch piece and my four and a quarter piece. And what's left over will be used for the handles. Time to drill some quarter inch holes. Each leg gets one hole centered three quarters of an inch down from one end. Each dummy leg gets a hole centered three eighths of an inch down from one end. Now it's important with these to make sure you got the grain oriented the right way so that it's inch and a half by one and seven sixteenths, not turned this way. After you've drilled the holes in the dummy leg, you want to take and make a mark on the edge at the other end from where the hole is, exactly in the center. You want to make this mark on all three of them. All seven of these inch and a half long pieces get quarter inch holes in them as well. One piece gets one hole exactly dead center. The other six pieces get two holes three eighths of an inch up centered at one inch in from one side and half an inch in from the other side. These six pieces with the two holes in them are going to be leg holders. Each leg assembly is going to get one leg between these two holders. You can see how awkward this is. That's why we've made these little short pieces to use during assembly. The person that I'm making this tripod for is left-handed. So I'm going to make it so that the bolts go through from this side and the wing nuts are going to be on this side so the person can turn them with their left hand. So that means that I want to orient these boards this way when I set the carriage bolts into them. 
If I was making this for a right-handed person, I'd have these pieces turned the other way. Now I want to take and set the bolt head into three of these pieces. The way I can do that is by using the inch and a half long bolt. And I'll just take it and put that in one of the holes. Then I can put this other board in behind it like this. And then take the bolt back out. Then I'll do that with the second hole. Now I want to do that with three of the pieces. The other three pieces are going to be on the side that gets the nut, so I don't need to pound this bolt into them. Another way you can seat these heads is if you happen to have a hole in your workbench somewhere. Install two two and a half inch carriage bolts. On the bolt that's farthest in, install the dummy leg. Remember that mark we made on the edge? Put that mark so it's to the outside. Then slide on another leg holder. Each bolt gets a flat washer. The bolt that's got the dummy leg gets a wing nut. The other bolt gets a hex nut. We want to go ahead and tighten those up a bit. It's important that we don't tighten this one up first because that might cause this thing to kind of bend out the wrong way. We want it to be nice and parallel like this. When it's all done, it doesn't matter if the dummy leg is sticking up a bit like it is here. So long as it isn't sticking up on this other side. If it's sticking up here, then you'll have to sand it down or something. So we're going to make up three of these. Here I have that piece that I cut five and three quarters by six and five eighths. I'm going to take my three leg assemblies and arrange them onto this base. I want the dummy legs to be towards the inside. I'm going to start by putting the first one on. Then I'll take the second one, put it like this, and the third one goes like this. And the idea is I'm going to arrange these until I get them lined up so it's a nice perfect triangle in the center. So there, something like that. Just line it up as best you can. I can see here now that this base is a little bit long. It's also a little bit long this way. That coming from the difference between the virtual wood when I designed it on the computer and the actual dimensions. Plus these corners are rounded off so that's making them go in a little bit more. But that's okay, I'll be able to trim that up. So once you get this lined up, you want to carefully mark the outline of each piece. Now you can either just mark the corners or you can mark a line all the way around the outside. You also want to take and make a mark that lines up with that little mark you made on the dummy legs. Now again, take your time and try not to move the pieces around when you do it. Next you're going to take and draw a line from where that little mark was that lined up on the dummy leg over to where the corner point is. You're going to do that like so, so you get three lines that are going to mark the center. Something like this. Extend this line right out to the edge of the board. It should be 90 degrees to this edge. Carefully measure along that line from the center point to the edge of the board and record that for later. An easy way you can do it is just lay down any little straight piece of wood that you have. Make a mark on it at the center point and at the edge of the board and then you can use the same stick to mark that distance again later on.